Hello, everybody. My guest today is Say Krishna. He's often described as an accidental entrepreneur. As an engineering undergrad, he built his first startup in the education tech space to power thousands of students to better use tablet PCs. Since then, he's founded, invested, and mentored startups all through, particularly in the technology space. He's an alumni of Stanford University Graduate School of Business and the founder of Scapic, a cloud-based virtual and augmented reality content platform helping businesses and users generate AR and VR experiences without coding. The company was part of Y Combinator Startup School and was recently recognized by Facebook as one of India's top VR and AR startups in their School of Innovation program. Sai, are you ready to take us to the top? Good to go. All Thank right. you for having me. You bet. So first things first, people here, Y Combinator or, or Silicon Valley, I generally assume, oh, pre-revenue, lots of funding. Do you fall in that category or no? Right. So given that we had to start our journey back in Asia, particularly in India, there is a, a, a sense of grounding uh, which is sort of brought in, which is business models have to be thought through uh, far more before we are able to uh, have access to institutional capital. Given that, Scapic today happens to be a revenue generating startup across the virtual reality and the augmented reality side of the fence. And we've had to think of a couple of novel ways in order to productize as well as get out there to the market and start generating those revenues. So not on the pre-revenue Kool-Aid just yet. That's good. Now talk to me about some of these unique things that you did to drive revenue. If you can tie into that story, maybe give an example of what you guys do for an end customer. Absolutely. So if you've noticed the way we've interacted with devices or computers have always changed every 10 to 12 years. There was a guy who wore a black turtleneck, took to stage uh, during 2007 called Steve Jobs, who really changed the world. But even if you rewind uh, about every decade before that, we've gone from desktops, mainframes, laptops, smartphones, so on and so forth which means that the ability for us to access computing information has changed. And now in that arc, we see virtual reality, conversational AI, and augmented reality to be the next frontier. Given that position, what we're building Scapic to be is uh, to be the simplest editor or the simplest visual interface for brands, creative professionals, and businesses to build content. Because the one thing that's going to make you buy a VR headset over uh, any other computing device out there is perhaps the content and similarly for AR as well. Yeah. So we think user generated content is a very important part of this puzzle. And we're building the simplest way for those users to generate the content. Like what that. Weebly and Wix and Squarespace allow people to do in terms of dragging, dropping together the websites, you're essentially allowing people to do, but for VR and AR experiences. Absolutely. Interesting. Uh, what's, so what's the revenue model? Currently, it happens to be a freemium SaaS play. And given that our experiences happen to be browser first and not app first, imagine over a period of time, clicking on a banner ad opens up an augmented reality application or going through uh, scrolling by uh, your newsfeed is able to enable through rich, immersive content. And we think the internet will move there where from an era of interactive content or multimedia centric content, we will move to immersive content, which is 360, 3D, VR, and AR centric. Given that, we are a freemium SaaS play in that with a licensing fee that ranges between 20 to $200 each month. And what would I get for 20 bucks a month? 20 bucks a month would give you access to an editor, which is similar to your Wix, WordPress, Squarespace, of the world, where is that build through content that. What makes it compelling is these content pieces are distributed across social media, your own web, your own websites, as well as advertising networks over a period of time. And here, the ROI, which is customer engagement, the number of eyeballs which are drawn to it, and the amount of time they spend on this content is significantly higher than what a traditional piece of media, such as a photo or video, is able to bring to the table. Interesting. When, when did you launch the company? This, uh, we got started with Scapic at about January of 2017. Okay. And since then, we got, we had the first version of our product out at uh, about July. Okay, very good. And then over the first, I guess it's just been kind of 12, 18 months, how many customers have you scaled to? Right. So today we serve more than 40 customers across uh, brands and, and large enterprises. These include customers such as Airbus, Viacom, Sony, uh, and the likes of which. Uh, given this, we've been, we sort of have optimism that VR slash AR is not more like a party trick, but it is something that is going to be of meaningful value addition over a prolonged period of time. It so is a market how many are on the free? So 40 are paying. How many have tried it? The ones we've tried it out is from a consumer side, we're close to 100,000 users at this point. Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, are there, are you, has anything surprised you about usage patterns that's affected your future roadmap? 
social media marketing. The one thing that we didn't quite anticipate is the amount that the tool would be used specifically for ensuring that content pieces in social media networks, particularly across uh, Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, are going to be ones that are 3D based, 360 based, or the likes of which. Now, that, that sort of took us a little by surprise because we were thinking that the market is going to point us towards directions of uh, education, training, standard operating procedures, and deep enterprises and some of their use cases. But uh, there's been a little bit of a realization curve there, which is tools of simplicity perhaps are as important for a marketer as much as it is for a business. Sure. Well, and you see a lot of times, basically, the thesis you just described, you know, consumer things that become very popular eventually do become adapted by enterprise, right? And so potentially that still happens, which will be interesting. Um, just to kind of put some ranges on this, though. So you mentioned 20 to 200, 20, 20 bucks a month, 40 customers. That puts you about kind of 800 bucks a month. So you're just kind of getting things going. Is that is that accurate? Not quite. So the 40 customers that I just described to you are enterprise customers who pay close to 200 per person per in the team. And these teams are typically about 20 to 30 members strong, oh, which I means see. that the, the revenues that we generate are significantly towards the six digit mark and uh, inching towards. Seven digit yeah. Have you have you pa I was going to say so from a revenue perspective, I mean, have you when you break a million a month, do you think that happens this year or next year or 2020? Uh, a million a month, I think, would be towards end 2019. At this point, uh, we are slated towards trying to achieve that out of the 2020. I'm really off. glad I asked that follow up question, by the way, because that would be, you know, eight grand a month would be very different <laughs> than. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, just to be clear, the math looks much more like 200 bucks per seat times 30 team members, right? Six grand a month across maybe about 40 enterprise applications. That puts you much closer to maybe 240 grand a month with eyes at a million a month, maybe late 2019. That, that's the plan. Is that's that fair? The that's the plan that we're running on. Very good. And help me understand a little bit, Sai, more about growth. So if you're at around that 240 mark today, where were you about a year ago? Um, about a year ago, we didn't exist. Okay, so you were pre-revenue. Uh, yeah, we were pre-revenue about even about a year ago. Had, walk me through the story how you got your first enterprise customer. The first one was an interesting one at that, which was we were right out of uh, startup school. And roughly around then we had we were uh, given an open innovation program or the application to which from one of uh, Europe's largest automobile leasing divisions. And what we really wanted through was an easy way in order to have a fleet of 200,000 cars and uh, an ability in order to look at them via an augmented reality layer and annotate them through. And at some point, things hit a glass ceiling purely because uh, an automobile company or the holding company, which happens to be a bank, are not necessarily experts in the virtual or the augmented reality space, which means more often than not, these companies take too long. It Things cost too much. They don't have the right teams and the efficiency takes a hit. And that's really where we were able to jump in and try to paint a story around the numbers rather than the technology. And that seemed to stick, which was very quickly we realized that the part of VR and AR resonates with the technology world, but right outside to some of the industries that we operate in, what perhaps makes more uh, sense is the math and not the technology in itself. And the value can be derived from the technology. So we were able to completely stitch together the conversation around numbers and how we would have a positive net impact on a team as well as a fleet of cars. And that I think at some level had them to bite. And has, you mentioned you're kind of shifting your model a bit more or it surprised you how people are using this more for social media. So moving forward in terms of growth channels, what channels are proving to be most effective for you? Nathan, uh, my apologies. Could you hit me on that one sure, more time? No problem. Yeah, so that, that story about the car manufacturer in Europe uh, right out of Y Combinator is, is a good one. But you mentioned you've pivoted a bit as well in terms of surprises from your use, your users. So what is the growth? Wh where, where, what are the growth channels today working well for you as you go after more of a consumer market? From a consumer standpoint, we see the market to be a cascade of three specific segments. Social media marketing, web-based advertising, as well as the concept of embedding content onto websites themselves. What I mean by that is today, social media marketing happens to be the primary driver with a clear increase in specific metrics that a marketer has. Over a period of time, we have seen advertising networks and some of the most popular ones out there open themselves up to 3D ads, 360 ads as well as AI formats. We'll continue. Again, to require a simple tool in order for you to author or build these ad units and then deploy them into your networks. We again fit the bill there. The third is, as I call, as creative storytelling inside websites themselves, which is right inside a web page. What if the ability for you to go through a narrative or an engaging immersive story using layers of augmented reality is going to be far more compelling? 
think of it as a small button that exists right on your web page. If you're selling a product and uh, if I'm selling a Roomba to you, tapping on that button immediately showcases that Roomba right here in augmented reality in front of me and has the ability for me to interact with it. And yeah, get th- this should replace essentially every, you know, there are huge businesses right now built around taking photographs of of e-commerce shop, like, you know, the H&M t-shirt, right? I mean, this tool should essentially replace every single one of those companies. Absolutely. To a point of personalization as well as interactivity, which traditional static media does not bring to the table either. Yeah. Uh, walk me through kind of how you've capitalized. So obviously you went through Y Combinator. There's a little bit of funding there. Have you raised additional capital? We've raised additional capital. We did a seed round of half a million dollars uh, close towards the end of uh, last month, last year, exactly to be precise. So about 500 grand total into the company? 500 grand in total to the company. That's great. That's great. So it's actually still pretty efficient considering where you're at based on that, that amount of money. Are you, I assume you're cash flow positive then today? Uh, in the trajectory too. We have ah, only okay. in, the, in, the, in the recent months started to notch some of our numbers through, which is uh, bear in mind that the product has been live for a little under two quarters just yet. So the enterprise or the business version of the product, which is sort of having a clear SaaS tier. Yeah. So we are in the trajectory in order to uh, run uh, uh, run through there. The run rate definitely seems to be pointing towards the number. What's the team size today? How many folks? Team's currently 18 members strong. One eight? One eight. Yeah. Okay. So so am I, I'm, am I a little bit higher than when I said 240 grand a month earlier? Am I, I'm high on that. Absolutely. Because it's a ramp up, right? So we didn't begin with 40 on day one. So I think we were able to layer that on and then subsequently drive forward. Yeah, yeah. So you, I think you would be looking uh, more towards about 50 to 60% of that number. And yeah. then subsequently from there, the ramp up is sort of right. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. Have you broken 100 a month yet? That's it. We, we are almost there. Oh, uh, good. I, we, we're close to about the 100 a month. Well, I mean, are, you got 30 days left. Knock it out before the end of the year, right? <laughs> yes. So we, we were able to manage that in November. Now it's, it's, it's really interesting to see whether we can sustain that through the period of December. Is yeah. Well. Are all 18 folks based in California or where are you guys? Oh, so interestingly, we'd like to call ourselves uh, California by DNA and uh, India by geography. So <laughs> we're a team that's entirely based out of India. And uh, we sort of shuttle between the Bay Area as well as uh, head back to India more often than not. Because uh, today we think uh, customers as well as users happen to be significantly across three regions of USA, Europe, um, and when I say Europe, just particular parts of it and India in itself, of course, because of the geographical ability that we have there. Yeah. But given that USA is such an important market for us, we happen to shuttle back and forth between the three. Are you tracking? Oh, sorry to cut you off. Are you? Tra- is it too early to talk about some of the economics around churn and CAC? Are you tracking that stuff yet or no? I think it's a little early for both from an organization standpoint as well as from an industry standpoint, which is web-based augmented and virtual reality is perhaps so new that uh, the market in itself would not be exactly what you're looking at now, three months from now, six months from now, and a year from now. And that's really where uh, it's fascinating, but also some of the traditional ways and means by which we are able to look at uh, look at churn, growth rates, as well as metrics that we hold ourselves uh, near and dear to might necessarily take a little longer for it to gestate out, purely given the nascency of the space that we operate. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, any plans to raise capital soon? We're in, we are in it. Uh, we're sort of doing an institution series A days and uh, looking to uh, looking to perhaps go between the months of Jan and and, and then northwards from there to try uh, losing, closing that out. Would you ever look at doing venture debt so that you don't have to take dilution? I think it is a, a necessary proposition for all founders to keep an eye towards. But for Scapex specifically, I think the difference would be that Given that the space is an evolving one, we'd always like to associate with venture firms who have a strategic value or who are able to bite it through with us over a longer period of time. I think debt makes a makes a ton of sense if you have more than uh, a few variables that have already been answered to and you only require growth capital in order to just fuel the rocket and drive it forward. Yep. For us, I think it's as much as it's growth capital, I think a good part of it is also towards ensuring that we're able to find that product market fit. As much as we have early signs of it, I think uh, it is still a search uh, given every company in our industry. And that's really where I think uh, an instrument such as a priced round might still make just as much sense, if not a little more sense, given the association with the venture industry as well as what a VC brings to the table. Very good, Sai. Let's wrap up here quickly because we're out of time with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Zero to one, Peter Thiel. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, maybe not CEO, but Paul Graham. Number uh, three, what billing tool do you use? 
uh, Zoho invoices. Zoho, okay, very good. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, I clock in at six and a half. That's pretty good in a situation, married, single kids. Single, uh, the freedom is something that I still love. Not kids, no no kids running around that you don't know about? <laughs> I'm married to my laptop as much as I can. <laughs> All right, and how old are you? I'm currently 24. 24, last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Uh, some of these things generally require a layer of perseverance and uh, good leaders are often boring. What I mean by that is, or a path to predictability on how your days go, how organized you are, and uh, necessarily what makes you uh, ritualistically good about the things you do. That might be considered less flamboyant or uh, you might not have the zeal in it. But uh, I definitely think uh, a little more uh, of that mundane uh, structure to a day goes a long way to make you productive. Good leaders are boring. It's a book title coming out. It sounds interesting. Uh, coming from Sai, launched Scapic back in 2017 today. They've got about 40 customers. They've scaled to just about 100,000 bucks in monthly recurring revenue. Again, up from nothing about a year before that. They raised 500,000 bucks, looking to potentially raise additional capital, but they're ushering in, and I love this, they're really creating a new market, uh, which is, again, bringing the uh, kind of the easiest platform to build VR, AR, and even 3D experiences without coding. So drag and drop like Wistia Wix, uh, you know, for things like social media or even, you know, ad units in the future or virtual tours, things like this. So look out, Sai, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks for having me again, Nate.